This is Twit. Uh, all right, Rob has it up first, and uh, my wife actually sent you coffee, so you're not allowed to talk me into <laughs> buying anything. That's uh, that is correct. So, Jonathan, mm-hmm. don't buy this. You don't want to buy this. I, I I promised your wife I wouldn't tempt you to buy this, and she donated me two coffees. I don't know if she told you that. She spent that much money on me, two, not just one. <laughs> Um, which is very kind uh, because she she knew that they took a chunk of it and wanted to make sure I could actually afford a full coffee and not uh, just a part of a coffee. These days in this economy, <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting gas station coffee. Yeah. So I made sure to pick something that I was pretty sure you wouldn't want. So today I'm talking about the Pine 64 e-ink tablet called the Pine Note. So the Pine Note it isn't exactly new, but its initial release back in 2021 was limited to uh, very few developer devices. So it isn't likely that any of you have your hands on one. Maybe one or two of you. I don't know. Probably not. Good odds that you don't have one if you're listening to this. So, and that that you know, and that's probably well. That's probably for the best because, you know, there were some kinks to work out and and the new Pine Note will be making improvements from the initial feedback that they received from those few developer devices. So early developer units, you know, they were aiming to have the old pen. They're, they're going to have the old pen replaced by a, a passive no charging unit that, that still features the same buttons. And from what I read, the uh, the Linux operating system wasn't really ready back then, but you know, it really wasn't that functional. But Maximilian has done and is still doing a lot of work to the Debian-based firmware uh, to provide a better user experience. Or, as they say in the blog post, quote, results uh, results in not only a er, the results are in, and uh, not only will you get a bare bones capable OS, but uh, a genuine, genuinely daily usable system that just works. So that's kind of amazing for an e ink tablet of any kind. Um, you know, even even the nicer or the well established ones. You know, they have their quirks i own i own uh, one of those models myself so and with all these initial issues you know they didn't feel comfortable taking a risk manufacturing a whole bunch of pine notes that wouldn't sell and being stuck with them so they waited they held off a little bit well at now after all this work that you know on all these changes the, you know the launch date you know although the launch date hasn't been announced yet they have announced that it is indeed coming back and in more of a a bulk production. So hopefully they can get the cost down from the blog post. We don't really know anything else is changing uh, besides those few things that they mentioned. Um, Maybe hopefully they're going to upgrade some things. Maybe there's fine. I don't know, but the original sold for 399 US dollars. You know, and yet, you know, hopefully what I gathered from reading the post, it seems like with with ramped up production that they'll be able to get that price dropped. I don't know what drop means. I don't know if that means $350 or $299 or what, but hopefully as some ramped up production gets that price a little more down, maybe in line with some of the other uh, e-ink tablets. Well, some of the e-ink tablets are already way more than that, but um, actually most of them are, I think. Yeah. But there are a few, like I think the Amazon um, scribe or whatever is, um, I think it's less than that. I don't remember. Maybe it's not. <laughs> Three eighty nine ninety seven on Amazon. So okay, so so already at the three ninety nine rate, that's mm-hmm. pretty much right in there with the lower cost e ink tablets out there already. So I guess that they can get that down at all. That 
that'd be a pretty good price for an ink tablet. Yeah. Um, so anyway, also, you know, to, to, to go on with, you know, saying what the original had, and we could probably estimate the new specs will be similar ish. It was a 10.1, which is a 10.1, uh, inch e ink display which is far too big for jonathan <laughs> and it has 16 levels of grayscale which is not enough colors for jonathan either you know he likes his hdr so Jeez. um grayscale is not for him he doesn't want this uh has a quad core uh system on the chip soc four gigs of ram 128 gigabyte emmc two microphones um i don't know if that's for like a stereo sound or what but um seems odd to have that at a something a, a reading device but whatever uh USB-C charging wi-fi and bluetooth and you know for me that 399 is a little more than i want to spend on on it but you know if the price comes down uh, i may be interested fortunately jonathan will not be and is not interested in this at all all right so two things first off They've got a video of running Doom on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of a sucker for running Doom on weird hardware. Uh, and second, reason to buy it right there. And second, I am now imagining 3D printing a candy laptop. You know, one of the old ones that had a monochrome display. Putting this in there as its display. It would just be, it would be great. So, but I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I've already made my big purchase for the month, and uh, yeah, that was that was that was enough. That said, you uh, you said for the month, and you can't even <laughs> order you can't even order it or pre order it yet. All they say is it's coming. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let it go there. I'll just say this: I I just yesterday I think spent this amount of money on a uh, replacement 3D printer. So. And I did not suggest that at all. It was not Rob's fault. <laughs> the printer's uh, fault, site. maybe? I, it was my old printer's fault. I, I went to print something. Went to print a case for a, a Helltech. Um, and uh, it just, it would not print. And so, well, okay, the nozzle's clogged. Gonna pull the old filament out of the nozzle. And, like, the old filament was jammed in there to where I had to get a pair of pliers. Like, had it heated up to, like, 220C and had a pair of pliers to get it out of there. And the filament broke off down inside. I finally took it all apart. And, like, my hot end and the nozzle itself are just, they're totally full of charred and burned plastic from using it over the years. And it's like, I really don't want to take the time. I don't want to spend the money on this old thing. And then I, I discovered the the bamboo labs mini with the multi-material unit on there for like 350 on sale for $350. So it's like, okay, fine. Push the button. <laughs> and and a quick, quick side note, buying uh, stuff that runs doom and it was, didn't do the story. It was pretty short, but well, an AMD engineer has uh, doom running on a AMD graphics card. Yes. But not just normally what you would think of, but using Rock M and everything, running everything on the video card. Mm -hmm. So it entirely runs on the video card. Now, is that the one where it's actually running the Doom code? Or is that the one where it's recreating Doom using an LLM? Uh, I believe it's actually running the Doom code. Okay. so that Because you're using Rock M to handle the logic and the this CPU part of it. Yeah, that that is impressive. I I saw another story. Speaking of Doom, um, where someone took Doom and fed it, like fed the video of it, maybe with the keyboard inputs as well, into an LLM, and it generated like a playable version, a live playable version of Doom um, that didn't use the original source code, but just the entire thing was hallucinated by the AI, and it, it was it was something. I'll have to see if I can find that story, too, because it was that was something to watch. Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>